<laughs> now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Hun King! Hun! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Have you have you heard about how you can get the sensational new miniature Quaker model farm? Listen. <laughs> That's Bossy the cow. That's Topsy the Shetland pony. These and 44 other detailed scale models of farm animals, farm buildings, and equipment all come with a complete new Quaker model farm. There are 46 different models in all, and they're yours at no extra cost. And listen to this. There's no waiting, nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. Listen to how you can start your own Quaker model farm right here and now. Tonight, you'll hear full details in just a few minutes. You can't afford to miss this amazing offer made by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot gun. <laughs> It was early spring in the Yukon Territory, but the snow still covered the ground. The sun was warm, but not yet powerful enough to free the streams of their icy covering. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was on patrol in a remote part of his territory. He had taken time off to replenish his meat supply by going on a hunting trip with old Lem Bailey, a prospector who lived with his wife in a small cabin a few miles off the trail. The sergeant and Lem were on the trail of a moose and were proceeding cautiously along the bank of a stream. I hope we can get a bead on that critter before the light gets bad. Still early, little Lem. He can't be too far away. These tracks are fresh. Yeah, maybe we should have brought the dog team further along with us. They're pretty far back. We won't have to go all the way back for them. Just far enough so King can hear me. I'll bring them. In. Take it easy along here, Lem. A moose may have pulled back into those thickets ahead. Well, I saw some branches move. Well, my eyes are getting bad, Sergeant. It's getting so I can't see anything unless it's right under my nose. Well, I'll go ahead and circle the thicket. Maybe I can scare something out. I'll be close behind you, Lem. Be careful. The wind was blowing toward Lem as he approached the thick covering of brush. Suddenly, he stepped on a dry branch under the snow, and it cracked loudly in the silence. At that moment, the bushes parted near Lamb and a large brown bear charged out at him. Run! Run! Lamb dodged to one side, and the Mountie's gun roared again and again as the beast closed in on the old man. It was almost upon him when it suddenly sprawled in the snow. Oh, it was close. Gosh, it sure was. I'm glad you're a good shot, Preston. You all right? Yes, except my heart's beating like a... Boat engine going upstream. I never saw a bear attack anyone like that. Uh, if a downwind from it, you must have frightened it. Uh, it was going to make shot work of. Well, Sergeant, look. Oh, that's a cub, a bear cub. That's why that bear attacked you. She thought you'd hurt her cub. Well, now, ain't he the cutest little thing you ever saw? He's too small to be afraid of men. <laughs> Come on, little fella. I won't hurt you. Too bad we had to make an orphan out of him. I wonder what we ought to do with him. Do with him? Well, take him home and make a pet out of him. Maggie let my pet coon go. We ain't even got a dog around. If your wife didn't like having a pet coon, she's not going to be too happy about a pet bear. Uh, shucks. Even Maggie couldn't help liking this little fella. Why, he's cute as a kitten. She's going to have to like him. I always had a hankering for a pet bear. <laughs> Remember, he isn't going to stay that size. If he grows as big as his mother, there won't be any room for you and Maggie in the cabin. <laughs> Well, he'll be good protection for us. 
I think I'll call him Rudy. What? Yeah, that's short for Rudolph. I had a partner once named Rudy. He looked just like a bear. And I'll bet this young fellow <laughs> grows up to look just like him. <laughs> All right, Lamb, you adopt him. I hope Maggie shares your enthusiasm. And let's take him back to the dog team and go on home. Now, oh, quit your wiggling, Rudy. From now on, I'm your foster paw, and you've got to do as I say. Now, come on. It was almost supper time when Sergeant Preston and Lem stopped the dog team in front of Lem's cabin. Oh, King! Hurry, oh, Husky! One hour! King, Preston's big lead dog, came back and sniffed curiously at the squirming bundle of fur in Lem's arms as he got off the dog sled. Now, now hold still, you little varmint! Oh, look at King, Sergeant. Think he'll hurt Rudy if I put him down? No, I'm sure he won't. Put the cub on the ground. They may as well get used to each other. Careful, King. Don't hurt him. No, King. No, don't scare him. You take care of him, fella. I swear, I think that dog knows everything you say, Sergeant. <laughs> Look at him. He's licking Rudy. <laughs> King knows he's just a baby. Rudy isn't afraid of King, either. <laughs> By golly, they're friends already. Now, that bear cub is going to have the best disposition in the world. He likes everybody. Oh, what are you two doing out there? I've got supper just about... For the lamb's sake. What have you got there, Lem Bailey? Well, let's hope everybody likes Rudy. Hey, look what Sergeant Preston and I brought you, Maggie. Hey, keep me what? out of this. Look at him. Ain't he the cutest little thing you ever saw? Why, it's a bear cub. Yeah, we just oh. knew you'd like him. <laughs> Who said I liked him? Why, uh, the sergeant here. Oh. He said he just knew you'd be crazy. Well, I... <laughs> He is a cute little bugger, Maggie. He just got rid of that pesky raccoon you had, Lem. Now you bring home a bear. Now you, you just let him go. I'm not going to put up with anything like that. Oh, Maggie, now look. Even King likes him. We'll call him Rudy. Remember, you always liked Rudy. You see, Maggie, we shot his ma in the woods today. The poor little fella, he's all alone in the world. Oh. He's hungry and cold, and, and he don't know how to help himself. Well, oh, you quit working on my sympathies, Lem Bailey. Well, I guess we'll just have to turn him loose and let him starve or get eaten by a wolf or something. Yeah. Well, oh, you two. <gasps> all right, bring him in. No use arguing, letting supper get cold. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, Sergeant. That did it. She'll keep him once she feeds him. <laughs> Come on, Rudy. We've got you over the first hurdle. Maggie's got a real tender heart, and I know she's going to like you. Lem Bailey and Maggie kept the young cub. And as Sergeant Preston stopped at their cabin whenever he was in the vicinity, King and Rudy became friendly. As the bear grew to his full size, he and King treated each other with quiet dignity. It always delighted Lem to watch them. <laughs> Uh, just look at him, Sergeant. <laughs> it's hard to believe that a bear and a dog could get along and know each other like that. <laughs> been a long time since our last visit, Lamb, but they haven't forgotten each other. You'll stay for supper, won't you? Why, well, if Maggie will ask me. Ask you? When she heard you coming, she started getting more food while, while I come out to meet you. <laughs> oh, hello there, Sergeant Preston. How are you, Maggie? Oh, I'm just fine, Sergeant. I uh, didn't go out to meet you because I knew you'd be hungry, and I thought hurrying supper would be showing more hospitality. Maggie, you certainly know the way to a man's heart. Oh, men, dogs, and bears, they're all alike. Oh. Fill their stomachs, and they think you're a queen. <laughs> well, Rudy sure thinks she's one. Oh, say, you should see that bear, Sergeant. He follows her all over the place. Well, now, uh, I didn't come here just to eat. As a matter of fact, I came to warn you people about two men we're after. You mean colonels? Yes, Lem. We're quite sure they're in this territory. I'm warning everyone to be on the lookout for them. Are these men dangerous, Sergeant? Yes, they are. They're killers. They're wanted by both the Canadian and United States governments. Oh, that's safe. Sir. We're putting these posters around. There's a picture of one of them on it. He escaped from prison. And there's a description of both of them. Uh, he's a rough-looking character. Mm, sure he is. But I don't think we have much to worry about. Our cabin is hidden off so far from everything that nobody could find it. It's just the kind of a place these men would like to find. But I doubt that you have to worry. One look at that big bear roaming around the place. 
not to discourage anybody. <laughs> You're right, Sergeant. Strangers don't ever drop in the way they used to. Of course, all our friends know he's as harmless as a kitten. Why, I even wrestle with him. I'll show you after supper, Sergeant. He's the smartest animal I ever saw. Oh, I should say he is. Why, the other day, he wanted to get out of the cabin, and he was standing on his hind legs, fooling with the latch of the door. Oh. <laughs> I swear he'd have opened it himself if I hadn't helped him. <laughs> Look how proud she is of Rudy. Remember, Sergeant, how we had to scheme to get her to keep him? Oh, <laughs> I suppose you'll throw that in my face to my dying day, yes. Lem Bailey. Oh, but I must admit I'm fond of Rudy. If I wasn't, I wouldn't let him in the cabin the way I do, and... Now that I know there are bad men in the territory, I'm mighty glad to have him. Incidentally, if you ever do happen to see Red Grant or Jake Carter, give them whatever they ask and don't try to resist. They'll kill you as quickly as they'd look at you. Red Grant and Jake Carter. Well, the names don't sound vicious. But the men are. Remember, they're desperate, Lem. They know they'll hang if they're caught. Back in the hills, not too far from Lem's cabin, Red Grant and Jake Carter sat before a small campfire in front of a cave, finishing their supper. The firelight cast dancing gleams on Red's ugly face as he wolfed his food greedily. Jake, smaller, with beady black eyes and the quick, lithe movements of a snake, emptied his plate into the fire. I can't eat this rotten food anymore. How can you sit there and gulp it down as if it was home cooking? Maybe I'm not as good a cook as that squaw of yours Quit was, talking but... about it. Oh. So now you're getting touchy about that, too. It's getting so I can't talk about nothing anymore. I'm sick of hiding out in a cave like a wild animal. I want some decent food. Mm. Nothing wrong with this food. I suppose after spending so much time in prison, you don't care what you eat. You'd have been there with me if I'd have talked. I helped you when you got out, didn't I? Now, look at us. They're after both of us. Should have left you and worked alone. They're after you for that knife when you did in Seattle. I wasn't even there when it happened. And if you hadn't shot that prospector, they'd never have known we were in the Yukon Territory. Oh, you're lucky I'm with you. You don't know nothing about hunting. You couldn't live in this wilderness without me. You wouldn't know how. I don't call this living. We're going to find a cabin somewhere. I want a roof over my head and a bed to sleep in. Sure. That's a big orange, Jake. But I'll admit we got to do something. I need a new gun. The one I got keeps jamming all the time. We're running short of food. I got to get something to hunt with. Well, Jake, maybe we'd better risk swapping some of our gold for supplies of a trading post. Are you crazy? By now, I bet every trading post in the territory has been told about us. You know how thorough the modern police are. Yeah, those red-coated cops. I'd like to drill one. Oh, Mounties or not, I'm not going to stay in this cave any longer. Tomorrow we'll start looking for a cabin. We can find one that's well enough hidden. We... Hey, yeah, that's a better idea. We can steal supplies from a cabin instead of going to the trading post. Right. And if we like the place well enough, maybe we could persuade whoever lives there to let us keep it. We'll continue our story in just a moment. It's new. It's different. It's the Quaker Model Farm. And it's yours without waiting a single day. Listen to how easy it is to get this swell, complete, miniature model farm. You can get 46 detailed scale models in all. They're yours at no extra cost. You build these exciting models of farm buildings yourself. It's easy. It's fun. And you can stock your farm with model cows. <coughs> you can have your own model pony. And wait till you see models like the Big Red Barn. Yes, this Big Red Barn actually has a sliding door. All buildings like farmhouse and garage have doors and windows that open and close. You get a cattle shed, too. A silo. A hen house with chickens. <coughs> There's farm equipment, too. A tractor. A pickup truck. You get everything. Even a roadside stand. What? What's more, all this doesn't cost you a single extra penny. Here's all you do to get these models. They come on special new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, every model now comes right on packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. There are eight different packages in all. 
And you get as many as six different models on a single package. All models are easy to build, too. Packages are pre-cut and scored. Don't delay another day. Start your model farm right away. There's no waiting, nothing to send in. No money, box tops, or coupons. These models come on new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the swell-tasting breakfast cereals shot from gun. And don't forget, different models come on eight different packages. Ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Remember, your grocer now has these key new models. They're yours for the asking when you ask for delicious... Quaker puffed wheat, and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston had left the Bailey's cabin after supper the night before. It was a cloudy day. And Maggie peered out the window after finishing the breakfast dishes. Oh, just look at them clouds. Mm. It's going to rain just as sure as you're born. And today's the day I promised Mrs. Jackson I'd go over and help her sew that new dress she's making. Well, a little rain won't hurt you. Wear your high boots and that oilskin coat. Of course, it's a long way to walk just to sew on a dress. Oh, it ain't just to sew. I need to talk to a woman. Once in a while, Liam. Sure you do, Maggie. Sure you do. We're so far away from everybody. We ought to get a mule so you could go visit and more. Oh, Lem Bailey, you know better than that. Me riding on a mule? Oh, walking don't hurt me any. Well, I ain't too proud to ride a mule. I got to go all the way to the trading post today and get some supplies. I could use a mule to help me tote them. I was just thinking about you, though. You ought to get out more. You you can't spend your time sitting around talking to a bear, even if he is a smart one like Rudy. Speaking of Rudy, if you're going to the trading post, I'd better shut him in the cabin. If I don't, he'll follow me, and Mrs. Jackson will be scared out of her wits. <laughs> well, it is a good idea to leave him here, after what Sergeant Preston said about them men he's chasing. Well, I guess I'd better get started. It's almost a full day's trip I'd like to get back before dark. Now, don't you get playing checkers with anybody and forget what time it is. I won't, Maggie, I won't. I'll be back about the same time you will, in time to help you start supper. Oh, there's Rudy. He's waiting for his breakfast, I guess. Well, I'll feed him in here and shut him up. Uh, here, Rudy. Rudy, come on, get your breakfast. Come on, come and get it. It was later that morning when Sergeant Preston, on horseback, with King running beside him, stopped at a bend in the trail and was greeted by Corporal Drake, who was waiting for him. Oh, hello, hello. Morning, Sergeant. Morning, Corporal. Anything to report? I think I may have a lead on the men we're after. Huh? I met a trapper this morning who said he'd seen a man hunting the other day. From his description of him, it was undoubtedly Red Grant. Uh, somewhere in these hills, all right. And then later on, I was riding over the ridge, and I saw a curl of campfire smoke down in the valley. I looked through my field glasses and saw that it was built in front of a cave. There was no sign of anyone near it, so I thought I'd meet you and report it. Do you think it's worth investigating? Yes, I do. That could be where they'd hide out. Lead the way, Corporal. We'll have a look at it. Good. Get up. Come, Come on. Come on, Get up there. As Corporal Drake and Sergeant Preston examined the cave in the hills, King sniffed around as if he, too, were looking for clues. He had picked up a torn piece of cloth from a dark corner of the cave. And Sergeant Preston took it from him. What'd you find, boy? What is it, Sergeant? Looks like a piece torn from the bottom of a trouser leg. Let's take it out into the light. Come on, King. Hmm. Here, take a look. Hey, that looks like the kind of cloth that's used for prison clothes. It is. I think we're on the trail of the men we want. But they've gone. They haven't left anything, and they won't be back. There aren't any tracks on these rocks to show which way they went. King can follow their scent without tracks. I got the scent from this piece of cloth. Here, King. This cloth boy. Find him, fella. After him. The rain that Maggie had predicted fell heavily about noon. But it had lightened to a thin drizzle when Jake Carter and Red Grant broke into the clearing where Lem's cabin stood. Jake. Look, a cabin. I don't care what it is, as long as it's got a roof. 
I'm drenched to the skin. Come on. Now, uh, Jake, be careful. Someone's there. I've got my knife and you have your gun. I'd like to see anybody try and stop us. Look. The door is swinging open and shut. Well, there's nobody home where they'd close it. Come on. Now, this cabin is away from everything. Nobody finds here. We'll take care of the owner of it when he comes back. <laughs> we'll send him to another climate. Go easy, Jake. It's dark in here. Maybe somebody's asleep. Hey, what's that? Jake, look out. It's a bear. Hey, get back, you. Jake, don't throw that knife. Red, Red shoot him. Get back. Shoot him, Red. Jake went spinning into the wall as the bear's huge paw struck him beside the head. Red raised his gun as the beast turned toward him, blood streaming from the knife wound in his shoulder. He pulled the trigger frantically. Now this gun, it's jammed. Get back. Get back, I say. No, no, no. With one swing of its mighty forepaw, the bear struck the gun from Red's hand. Then it struck again. Oh, no. Red rolled toward the cot and lay writhing beside it. Jake lay still on the other side of the room, his leg crumpled under him. The huge bear, grunting with rage and pain, ran out the open door. The rain had stopped, and a small break in the clouds lighted up the clearing as the beast loped toward some rocks that rose above the trees a short distance away. He left a trail of blood behind him. It was some time later when Sergeant Preston and Corporal Drake, following King, walked their horses along the narrow trail leading toward Lamb's cabin. It was impossible to go faster, and the sergeant's fears mounted as they drew closer. It was with a sigh of relief that he saw Lem's figure trudging ahead as they neared the clearing. Lem, Lem. Whoa, King, right, fella. Stay here, boy. Uh, wish I'd met you sooner. You could have carried this pack I'm bringing from the trading post. Hold on, hold on. Lem, Mikey home? I don't think she'll be back yet. She went over to Mrs. Jackson's today. Why? Lem, this is Corporal Drake. How are you, Lem? Oh. The Corporal and I are on the trail of those men I told you about, and the trail leads to your cabin. Holy cats! Now, you stay back and let us go ahead. <laughs> well, Sergeant, Maggie was going to shut Rudy in the cabin. He'd scare anybody away. These men don't scare easily. You follow us, Lem. Steady, follow up. <laughs> you can bring the horses. Come on, Corporal. <laughs> we better go ahead on foot. King ran ahead of the Mounties as they approached the cabin. He went through the open door and barked frantically from inside. There's something wrong in there. Someone's been hurt. There's blood on this step. Look, there in the corner, a man. Help! Help! Another one over there. I'll take a look at him. Help! My shoulder! Red Grant. This one is Jake Carter. I'm hurt. Or was Jake Carter? He's dead. What happened, Grant? A, a bear. It was a bear. What did he say? A bear? Lem has a pet bear. It must have attacked him. Let's have a look at that shoulder before we move him. I'll cut his coat open. Oh, All right. Is he? What happened, Sergeant? Did you get him? We didn't, Lem. Rudy did. Rudy? Rudy wouldn't attack anybody. Who said he did? Red Grant said so. He's lying. What happened, you lying thief? You tell the truth. Jake threw his knife. It went into the bear's shoulder, but it didn't kill him. You mean he stuck Rudy with a knife? Yeah. Why, the sneaking rat, I'll kill him. Where is he? You're too late, Lamb. Rudy killed him. He's over there in the corner. Killed him? Why, Rudy did no such thing. He wouldn't do a thing like that. He would if he were wounded. Wounded? I think it's safe to move Grant to that cot, don't you, Corporal? Yes, you I mean do. that's Rudy's blood on the step? Yes, Lem. Come on, Corporal. Right. I'll lift him. Oh, Rudy's hurt, huh? I'm going to find him. Lem, don't go after that bear. He's dangerous. I'm going to find him. Uh, hurry, Corporal. Lift Grant over the cot. Is he on his shoulder? Oh, there. I'll have to go after Lem. That bear might kill him. I'll take care of Grant, Sergeant. Come on, King. <laughs> the tracks of the wounded bear were clear in the soft mud after the rain. They led to a niche in a rocky wall a short distance from the cabin. Lem was nearing it when Sergeant Preston caught sight of him. Realizing he couldn't catch him, the Mountie sent King ahead. Go on, King. Stop him, boy. Hold him, King. The great dog streaked over the soft ground, but just as he reached Lem, there was a roar from the rocks as the big bear charged out. But King sprang at the same instant, his fangs tearing at the bear's shoulder. For an instant, the bear's charge was stopped. Then, with a mighty swing, he threw King's body from him. But it was then that Sergeant Preston's gun spoke. And the big brown body sprawled headlong beside Lem. Lem, Lem, are you all right? Uh, yes, I guess so, but, but Rudy... I had to kill him, Lem. If I hadn't, he'd have killed you. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe Rudy'd do it. He, he was my friend. He was wounded. He didn't know what he was doing. I must have scared him. I can't believe... Come back to the cabin, Lem. Don't look at him. I'll take care of him later. I just can't believe he'd do it. As Lem and Sergeant Preston neared the door of the cabin... 
they saw Maggie enter the clearing from the trail. There's Maggie, little man. I'd better warn her about what's happened before she gets to the cabin. Yeah, we better. She's home earlier than she expected to be. Hello, Maggie. Well, well Sergeant Preston, you back again? Yes, Maggie. You see, we... Wait. Lem, look. Well, what's that? Hmm? Why, you silly galoot. What do you think it is? It's Rudy. But it, 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 it can be. He was... He was in the... He a... was shot in the cabin. Yeah. But that pesky varmint must have figured out how to get the door open. That's why I'm home early. He ruined my whole day. Yes. He followed me to the Jacksons and scared poor Mrs. Jackson out of a year's growth when he poked his head through her open window. He, he's alive! Then he got into her storeroom and stole her molasses. Got yes. it all over himself and everything else. Yes. He, he's all sticky with it. I've never been so mortified in order. Say, what's wrong with you two? Your jaws are hanging open, your eyes are popping. We, we just shot a bear. It had been in your cabin. A bear in my cabin? Well, that ain't impossible. There's lots of them around here. I suppose when Rudy left the door open, a wild one went in foraging for food. Oh, Rudy, I knew you wouldn't do it. You never hurt me. What? Damn you, Hugging that bear. You'll get all full of sticky molasses. Uh, Rudy, I knew you wouldn't do it. <laughs> What's he talking about, Sergeant? Well, it's a long story, Maggie, but Lem thought the other bear was Rudy. What? Yes. King saved my life. King and the Sergeant. The bear charged me, but King stopped him long enough for the Sergeant to shoot. Well, of all things... Lem Bailey, you better get yourself some glasses. That's a good idea, Lem. You want to be sure after this that you get the right bear when you're going to be chummy with him. Now, Maggie, you'd better go for a little walk with Lem. A few things to take care of in your cabin. What? What's this all about? Lem will explain it to you, Maggie. Lunking. <laughs> yes, King, old boy. Thanks to your quick action, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Don't forget, hurry to your grocer. Get new model farm packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, your grocer now has them. You get 46 colorful models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals. They come on eight different packages, and they're yours at no extra cost. Don't miss out. Start building yourself a model farm pronto. And remember... These exciting models come only with delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're waiting for you now on your grocer's shelf, so hurry. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the White Water. At least, King and I knew what we were facing when we started down the 30-mile river after Link Tanner and Baldy Macklin. A narrow green channel between the bands of water that boiled white over the shoals and great black rocks that rose above the deep water. But we didn't realize that we'd have to dive into the maelstrom and trying to save the lives of two innocent people. It was a thrilling experience. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. So long.